Coral reefs are made up of corals and many other organisms. The coral itself is actually a symbiosis between an animal and a plant, and the plant portion of that symbiosis really needs good sunlight in order to grow and function. For that reason, corals can only grow in water that's pretty clear and clean, and when the water is in good shape, then we see corals thriving uh, through the symbiotic association, providing a wonderful home for fish, uh, for turtles, for a variety of invertebrates, and together, this makes up a thriving coral reef. Water quality and bottom quality are constantly compromised when we look at the impacts of land-based activities on coastal reefs, and that's an area of great concern. Uh, reefs like this that are in pretty decent shape throughout the world have been affected, including relationships like this clownfish and the sea anemone, sponges, a variety of invertebrates have been pushed out of reefs due to changes in water quality. Likewise, when the reef dies and the structure is lost, it's no longer habitat for fish. And also we see things like this crown of thorn starfish that normally eat coral, or aggressive interactions between corals where one will overgrow another are constantly occurring. So if water quality and bottom quality are not good, then new corals can't come in to replace those that are killed. In these aerial shots, we can see the issue between land and sea. That is, coral reefs, in this case on Guam, and from many of the islands in Micronesia, these are what we call fringing reefs. That is, they're attached to the land, so anything used on land today ends up on the coral reef and in the coastal areas tomorrow. As we see in this area of urbanization, coral reefs provide a very important function of protecting coastal areas from erosion and wave damage. The problem, though, is that things going on on land and up the watersheds comes down through the rivers and streams. And here we can see a plume of sediment that after a rainstorm will extend out into the ocean, burying corals, compromising water quality, interfering with coral reproductive cues, and interfering with the ability of a coral reef to exist. Coral reefs have developed over 65 million years to live in clear and clean water. And in this shot in Pago Bay, Guam, we can see a river plume coming out after a rainstorm. What you can see are the red sediments that have been carried from the hills where there's been road construction and home development. What you can't see are the variety of chemicals, everything from pesticides to heavy metals and gasoline products that come out from these watersheds, get deposited on the reef, and begin to interfere with the very basic structures and functions of reefs. Corals can provide mucus to clean their surfaces, but as we add up the stressors from mud and silt from the shorelines, power plants, heating water, and here we see underwater discharges from a sewage plant, all of these compromise the water quality, the bottom quality, and hence the ability of coral reefs to thrive. This area now is fairly dead. The number of coral species has been drastically reduced. And here you see the particles of material coming out from a sewage outfall, uh, getting right into the fish. People are eating these fish or eating the fish that feed on these. We also get imbalances where the nutrients from these outfalls can create algal blooms. The algae ends up covering over the coral and destroying uh, the integrity of the reef. Algae can be very competitive. They grow much more quickly than corals do, so when nutrients are put in, they can cover the coral. There are natural causes of coral reef loss, including here we see evidence of a crown of thorn starfish having fed on some branching corals, and we'll see other examples of bleaching. These are more tied to global climate change and ocean warming. The key is that if the reef is affected over short terms and the bottom and water quality are good, these reefs can in fact reestablish themselves through reproduction and recruitment. This thriving reef area will continue to provide essential fish habitat as long as the integrity of the reef is intact through good water quality, through good bottom quality, and the ability of these corals to reproduce and recruit. This is a very big issue for those of us that have been studying reefs for decades, having seen a worldwide decline in reefs. And this is not only affecting today's population, but is important for the legacy we leave to future generations.